Okay, here we go with part 9 of chapter 3, but remember this chapter is a unit all by itself, so I kind of expected there would be more for us to talk about. Uh, here's where we left off. We're going to look at uh, all of these possible isomers here, the 1,2 versus 1,4 dimethylcyclohexane, and then the cis and trans versions of each, and in each case identify which structures are more stable than, than the others. And we'll start with the cis-1,2 isomer. And if you draw uh, a chair confirmation of this, you find that as long as you put the methyl groups adjacent to each other so that they are in a 1,2 relationship, you can get one of them equatorial, but not both. The other is going to have to be axial. And I've color-coded them and labeled E for equatorial, A for axial in each case. Uh, the ring can and will flip. But in this case, uh, you still end up with one of each, one axial, one equatorial. So both of these are equal in stability, and drawing these two arrows of equal length is also a way to kind of imply that that's true. Uh, if we switch to the trans isomer, with still the one two isomer, but now trans, uh, on the left we've got them both axial, and that's not a very stable arrangement. But the good news for this molecule is that it can flip that ring. And like I said before, things that are axial become equatorial. And, and so both of these end up equatorial. So this structure on the right is much more stable. Uh, that's why the arrow is pointing more heavily towards the right than the left. We would expect this one on the right to be more prevalent. And we can conclude that the trans 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane is more stable than cis because the cis does not have the opportunity to make both of its groups equatorial the way trans does. If we look at the 1,4 arrangement, uh, starting again with cis, well, again, you can get one group, uh, one methyl group to be equatorial, but the other one's going to have to be axial. And again, these bond angles are only obvious if we know when we draw a, a chair uh, exactly what directions the hydrogens and the methyls are pointing. So that handout with the two versions of the flip cyclohexane uh, chairs kind of that's where we start when we start drawing these to to be able to say for sure which bonds will be axial or equatorial so the cis 1 4 is kind of like the cis 1 2 we can get one thing axial the other is equatorial and if we switch to the trans isomer well the one on the right is more stable than the one on the left here because both substituents are equatorial so the trans 1,4 isomer is more stable than the cis 1,4 uh, because it can get both of those things, both of those methyl groups in an equatorial arrangement. But you really have to draw them out and be able to uh, draw both versions of the chair conformations to really conclude uh, whether or not you can get both substituents equatorial. This last slide here is a good uh, practice exercise. The question at the bottom, what if we have 1,3-dimethylcyclohexane? We can draw a cis version and a trans version, and each of those has two different chair conformations. And we can see in which cases is it possible to get both of those methyl groups equatorial. In which cases is it not? But you really can't glance at the name of the compound to figure that out. It would have to be drawn out. So like I say, you can use the template provided for drawing your chair conformations, and you want to get uh, some practice in, in drawing those and in drawing axial up bonds and equatorial up bonds and, and, and the down versions of both of those. And the homework problems also provide you with a way to do this. In many cases you're given the name of a compound but the idea is to draw the most stable conformation of it. And, and that involves a little bit of artwork but like anything practice makes perfect. 